Hey everybody, welcome to another drive-through rundown. Today we're going to go over Voyage of the Beagle. Now this is the first expansion uh, to Robinson Crusoe Adventures on the Cursed Island here. So this actually says volume one on it. I don't know if that's just because it's to make it kind of look like a book or if there's actually going to be multiple expansions for this. Now you'll see that I have the Z-Man edition of the base game and then this is the portal edition here. Um, for some of the cards are slightly different um, uh, backing uh, between the portal and the Z-Man. I believe it's fine if you have the portal edition of the base game, but um, it's not a huge deal. I'm not even going to sleeve the cards or anything. If you're paying super close attention, um, in very rare circumstances it'll matter, but I don't think it's going to matter at all. So. Uh, let's take a look inside here, and I'll go through all the different uh, rules and some of the different things there. Now, I haven't played any of this. I've played the base game quite a bit, um, but this is going to take you know some extended plays to kind of get through all of these different missions and things that are in here. Now, the idea is that you and your band of friends are helping Charles Darwin on his voyage of the Beagle here. The HMS Beagle is the... Uh, ship that they were on. So you're going to help him through five scenarios uh, meant to be played sequentially and collect different, uh, you know, scientific findings, animals, and different plants and things and help him kind of uh, get those different things and also live through different catastrophes that are going to happen. So let's open the box and then we'll kind of go through it. So let me give you kind of a quick component overview, then I'll get into some more details. So first thing to look at here is you have a missionary. This is a new uh, player character. You can use this in the base game. Uh, and it's got, you know, just all the different special abilities and you get a little diary. And obviously there's a female and male uh, counterpart there. And then you also have Darwin here. Now he only has one side. Well, I should say he has a one um, gender, but he actually has, does have two sides. So you can see he's got a little bit of life here, and then on this side here, he's got some more life. Now, you're always going to play with him in the scenarios for this expansion. You can't use him with any of the scenarios in the base game. Um, but he's going to start off uh, basically on this side with these different special abilities. He doesn't have any uh, special invention that comes with him. Uh, but based on how you win or maybe don't win the first scenario, then you may get a sort of an upgraded version of him for, uh, you can see, future scenarios there. Uh, you've got this little mat here. I'll talk about this in a little bit. This is uh, just a little tracker for some of the different scenarios. Here is the actual scenario book here. And it has sort of a nice uh, thick cardboard here. It's relatively dense here. You get your turn track there for different things, some different setup, uh, some different rules which are elucidated in the main rule book there. You can see you've got this, some different actions here, a couple of different uh, goals you're trying to get to for this scenario. And then we can just take a quick uh, summary here. You can see this second one here is you're going to have a lot of storms and stuff on your turns right from the beginning. Uh, and just while we're in here, you can basically you're supposed to play the first and second scenario kind of back to back because how the map is set up and how things sort of shake out in the first scenario is going to directly affect uh, the second scenario more directly than the others. And then once we start to get into the others, then you just sort of have to maybe make some notes of how the last scenario ended up and that'll just slightly tweak um, how the other scenarios, which are really, really very different, uh, turn out. So this is a nice little book here. I kind of like how they did this. And then once you've completed all five, you're going to add up the knowledge points. That's the KP there. And then you're going to take a look at that and then you're going to sort of see how, uh, you know, Darwin's expedition turned out. So if you did it really well, you know, the descent of man and selection in relation to sex, you know, is published. And the scientific value is theory of human evolution and all that different stuff is established. Whereas if you don't do very well, then, you know, then that's the outcome there. It's kind of interesting. Uh, this kind of outcome here reminded me of Nemo's War. And speaking of beagles, I apologize for my Cocker Spaniel there. <laughs> uh, here we've got the rule book. I'll go over this in some uh, detail in a second. We've got some other boards here. Now here is sort of your main board. And here you're going to keep track of the tribal secrets, the rare beasts, resources, fossils, uh, carnivorous plants and things. You're going to actually use little black cubes to keep track of what you've discovered here. And these are the amount of uh, knowledge points that it's worth. So let's say you had six rare beasts. You'd have 30 knowledge points just from those rare beasts. 
So you're going to basically find all of this stuff in the first scenario, and then you sort of need to get it back to, um, you know, back to camp or whatever, back to civilization uh, by the end of the campaign here. So this is Darwin's cabin here inside the ship, kind of nicely illustrated there. You got the little desk, you know, some of the little sort of scientific apparatuses and things like that. Uh, so that's that. So this is you're going to be kind of keeping track of that and you know maybe taking notes of where you have certain things there. And then we have here a double-sided board here, the ship. And the ship is going to get wrecked. Uh, you can see here in scenario two. And then you've got some different tiles that you're going to place on here to repair the ship. And then once we get into scenario three, you're actually going to be using the map to sail and then also further repair the ship. Uh, so this is a pretty interesting little board here. And then we got some different cards and different tokens and different things like that in here. So let's just do sort of a quick, I'm going to try to stay spoiler free, but I want to kind of give you a sense of what's going to be in the different five scenarios, some of the different things uh, that you will expect. So let's just look quickly through the scenario book. I'll try to be as spoiler free as a possible here. It's not a huge deal. I mean, you're going to want to look through the book when you get the expansion and get a uh, sense of you know what's kind of coming and what to expect. That way you can kind of prepare and make decisions better here. So scenario one, this is where you're going to be collecting the different resources. You've got rare beasts, fossils, carnivorous plants, and then you can collect sets here of these resources to generate these chests. And again, these are all going to be stored here by placing the little uh, black cubes on there and keeping track of what you've gotten so far. So you can see over here, it kind of explains, you're going to see uh, the weather's going to turn really drastic. And then again, this is going to go directly into scenario two, where the weather continues to get worse. And then you can see here, you can go on these different spots here, and these will be on the tiles in the game. And as the tiles come out, based on, uh, you know, if you get a beast uh, token, or if you get the um, this little idle token there, then you're going to take some of those tokens that you use from the base game and some of the other scenarios, mark those, and then be able to capture the beasts. And for the beast, you have these little cage tokens. Here you can see some of these and these are going to be used to capture the beasts. And then you can actually use the beasts and stuff for food if you really want to at any point uh, you know, during the campaign in later scenarios. Obviously you don't really want to do that, but you can. Uh, one neat thing here is you have these plants here and you have these special plant cards here. And you can see here, you can get this. It's a black lotus. It's going to decrease morale. And then this is going to go down into, you know, the threat area and be something that you need to take care of. If you remember, you know, you have your main deck of cards here. And these are, you know, these are sort of the main events that are going to happen. You're going to do the event and then possibly need to put workers on here to take care of it. In the similar sense, these carnivorous plants here, you're going to discover them mark them on your board here but then also then need to be uh you know try to get rid of them because you can be discarding the uh, uh determination and you know getting rid of food and all kinds of stuff so these are kind of an interesting uh thing to discover there you get a little bit of a risk in discovering these exotic plants and you got some other different things just like any scenario these different tokens mean different things based on the scenario here you can see you're going to total up all of the knowledge points based on what you've discovered here. You need to discover at least three different types and then you need a certain total of knowledge points and that's going to directly affect you know what happens in future scenarios. So maybe Darwin gets some more determination, you start with the side with more life, different things like that. If you don't get enough, you know, game over. So and also at any point that if one of the players dies, that's going to be immediate game over. Now you've also got some more of these little helper guys here that you can use in the campaign here. And again, you don't need to feed them or they're not affected by weather, but they're going to give you uh, little special abilities uh, that you can use to help make the game uh, easier there. Just kind of like the dog in the base game. Now scenario two, you're going to have a shipwreck here. So you can take actions here to uh, repair the ship. You've also got some different inventions and stuff that you can use. Uh, here is the uh, side here of the ship that you're going to be looking at. What you want to try to do is find the matching icons here and then these will, you know, you can see the ship will start to look more and more repaired like so. And there's a couple other different things as well. Um, you can see here there's actually uh, locations here um, matching the different tiles that you can get. So if you were to repair the mast, you can have a weak mast there using this amount of material or strong mast here. So you can have weak or solid 
uh, you know, different actions there for depending on how well you uh, repair the ship. So that's going to be, um, you know, carry over into the next scenario. One thing to notice here is this is searching for the beast. So one thing that's going to happen is um, a lot of stuff is going to happen where uh, you're, the beasts kind of get washed away and they kind of run away from the storm. And so you're going to have to kind of go back in. And again, you're going to keep all the tiles and the landscape the same, and but it's going to slightly change based on shifting into the second scenario. And then the third scenario here is going to be kind of interesting. You're actually going to take the map here and basically turn it into sort of a C area. So you've got these different blue tokens there. These are going to have different things on the si other side of it there. And you're also going to have these little islands here, which you can see will give you different resources and things on that side. And you're going to uh, basically need, need to be sailing your ship through here. So as you sail around, you're going to have Darwin basically study these different shoals get the different things in his, his records and then gather on the different islets and uh, you know get resources that way. Then you've got here uh, scenario four, you're going to hit a tribal island. You can see you're going to have a lot uh, of uh, negative encounters with sort of beasts type of things or tribal encounters there. Um, so you can actually use the shoals that you explored in this scenario uh, to help you meet some of the different demands and that's kind of a consistent thing throughout the game where you know something you caught in the previous scenario will carry over to the next. You just make a quick note of that. It's nothing that's too uh, cumbersome here. Uh, so you got to deal with the tribal, or reveal their secrets here and then kind of get through and live through that and then you have the homeward bound scenario here finally. And this is basically it ties all the way back to the first scenario. Where you've got to keep your plants healthy, uh, keep everything that you've figured out in the first scenario, and then you know carry that all the way through to the end. And then at the again, at the end, you're going to total up your knowledge points. And just one other sort of interesting note about this scenario, the fifth one. Uh, there's you're going to set out these uh, randomly these nine beach cards and be able to take an action to sift through here. And it basically is an idea of memory. So you're going to try to match. Uh, the different uh, you know cards here based on uh, the different uh, you know things that they have on them. So this is a sort of a weird um, sort of mini game, and that's sort of consistent I think with all of the different scenarios. You got you know you're tracking everything on this board here. You've got the different ship that you're trying to uh, repair, and then again instead of using the island to explore like the different tiles, you're actually using you know your little ship token to move around and discover the shoals and everything so you've got sort of like your main Robinson Crusoe game but also sort of some of these sort of uh, you know built on mini games to sort of you know draw a story and plot through all of these different scenarios now that's a very sort of brief overview of the game you have some of these other cards here you're gonna add these in you can see by the green book these are gonna be used for the scenarios in the Darwin expansion but then they've also given you some extra ones to shuffle in uh, when you're playing with the base game. You've also got some new inventions here and these actually have a sort of consequence to them as well so uh, this is kind of interesting here. Um, the other thing is you have these, uh, these are for the, I think I believe for the fourth scenario and so you know these have some different things so there's a lot of little sort of you know different uh, types of you know tweaks that they've done to the game to really kind of branch it out and really you know make it I think quite a bit of a different game so anyway that's a quick rundown of a voyage of the beagle definitely a departure and thematically and I think uh, you know in a lot of ways so it'll be interesting to see if they ever come back to this with like you know maybe more of a fantastical type of adventure or something like that this one's very much a historical uh, adventure which is also unexpected so anyway uh, voyage of the beagle thanks